with the Small Business Development Center. Welcome to today's webinar. Today is the second webinar of our Marketing Basics. And uh, as Anita just mentioned, we will be talking today about developing a marketing strategy and, uh, and plan for your business. These webinars are being brought to you thanks to collaboration of various organizations here in the Valley, including the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center, SCORE of Western Mass, Cent uh, the Center for Women and Enterprise, Mass Growth Capital Corporation, Valley Community Development, Common Capital, and uh, Franklin County CDC. And thanks to our sponsors, the Small Business Administration, the State of Massachusetts, UMass Eisenberg School of Management, which is our host for our program here at the MSBDC, and we're accredited by America's SBDC. And uh, go ahead, next slide, please. Sure. These are the folks in our area um, that are part of this collaborative and whom you can reach out to for assistance with your business. We're all business advisors. We're here in the region. All of us provide free, uh, free assistance for your business. So feel free to reach out with any questions. Next slide. Thank you. And this is the website for, our, uh, for MSPDC. All of these trainings are being listed in our training page. So if you go to msbdc.org, you go to trainings, you'll see uh, this and other upcoming webinars. We have about nine of them, including tomorrow's webinar, that are posted out there. So they're all free. You want to sign up and, and join us uh, so you can learn uh, more stuff about marketing your business. And these are a listing of the other offices throughout the state. And Lynn is with us today, and we're thrilled to have him here. Lynn Gendron is a, a counselor with SCORE, has been with them for 11 years, is an award-winning counselor, and works beautifully with clients at all stages of business. He has a great business experience himself in manufacturing on the world stage, having lived in China. He speaks Portuguese. There's a lot about Lynn that you can um, come to learn as you work with him more. But he is, is just tremendous at teaching marketing and his whole focus is really that before we do a lot of things to market our businesses we really have to have a plan and a strategy so this is part of our basic series you can watch the one that we did on Monday which was social media marketing and that is now available as a <laughs> webinar that you can see it and today is the marketing plan and then next Tuesday is the basics of designing a website we consider this the basic series and there are 18 classes that will follow handled um, twice a week until the second week of November so you'll be getting all that information now that you're on our mailing list so without further ado Len take it away uh, great okay I'm going to uh, preface this a little bit by saying the individual who uh, uh, designed these slides uh, had a great love for transitions so we get to play some games with the transitions here. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about here is developing your uh, marketing plan and strategy. Uh, just like if you're gonna take a road trip, it doesn't make any sense if you don't know where you're going to begin with and then planning how you're gonna get there. Uh, so we're gonna do that with, uh, with marketing as, uh, as well. Uh, okay. Uh, so what is marketing? Okay. Uh, we've got uh, marketing that involves a uh, strategic uh, process like the branding, uh, promotions you do, your design, your logo, uh, uh, the sales efforts, the advertising, developing or uh, researching your, uh, your target audience and your marketplace. All of these things go into uh, uh, strategic marketing. And then we have the, the tactical marketing, which is kind of like zooming in. Uh, and understanding your uh, customer, uh, your consumer behavior, uh, product development, uh, where you people are on social media, uh, and so forth. So all of this and uh, so much more is actually involved in marketing. Actually, marketing is anything that, uh, that you use to, uh, to uh, attract or uh, keep uh, customers. Uh, so anything you do, whether it's that phone call that says, how did it go? Uh, or uh, afterwards or, or not. Uh, okay, so there's our transitions. Okay, uh, so marketing uh, is, uh, as the slide says, a little bit uh, misunderstood. Everybody 
um, mixes up marketing and advertising or marketing and sales. Uh, and they're all pieces of the same uh, bit, but the overall strategy, the thing at the very top level is uh, marketing and marketing strategy. So, but marketing includes customer service, uh, such as um, uh, when you go into a, uh, into a store or into a website, you have a complaint. Uh, some people want a response. They want some connection there. Uh, it's also that note that the, uh, that the doctor sends you after your visit that says, how are you feeling? Uh, that's, uh, that's all part of uh, the marketing. Um, so we're going to be talking today about uh, strategic planning. I've got a, excuse me, here, I've got an overactive dog in the background. Um, so we're going to cover the strategic planning. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what you need to find in your marketing research. But basically, everything an organization does from the time it um, uh, realizes the a need for a product or a service until it's in the hands of the ultimate uh, consumer. So when we talk about marketing strategy, these are some elements of developing your marketing strategy. First, we need a goal. What are you trying to accomplish um, with your business? Um, uh, this year's goal, let's say, is to make $100,000 in sales. Okay, our strategy is, uh, first of all, who are the customers? Tell us something about the customers because we're gonna to have to be able to find them and we're also gonna to have to tailor our message to whoever that, uh, that customer is. Uh, and then there are our competitors. What am I competing against? Um, how many uh, clients does my competitor have? What products does the competitor um, uh, produce? Uh, how long has the competitor been in the market? Are they a price leader or price follower or the low price? And how big is the market? that they are serving. Then we look at our product uh, description, the size, features, and functions. What am I offering? Okay, um, I, had a, um, I had a client who uh, was selling uh, basically a, a cooler, an ice chest. Uh, now everybody sells ice chests, but uh, he describes his, um, his ice chest as uh, ice free. He's got a, a solar battery that uh, powers the ice chest, so it stays cold without the ice melting and so forth. In, in addition, uh, it, you can plug in your cell phone and recharge your phone while you're out at that campsite or the picnic. Uh, it's got a, uh, uh, a light stick that pulls up so that in the campsite at night, you get some light, and it even has a built-in radio. So his ice chest is very unique. And what we're talking about your product, whether it's a service or a, a physical product, what makes your product unique, different than everybody else? Everybody sells an ice chest, but not everybody has the features or the functions that this ice chest does. What does your ice chest have? And then the media that we're going to use, this is part of our strategy. This says that in getting our message to our clients, we want to use newspaper, radio, TV, my website, and these social media uh, uh, channels. And then finally, what is my marketing message? Uh, what are we trying to get across as a whole? Maybe, uh, maybe my, whole, uh, my whole bit about my company is that our shoes are comfortable, okay? So we have to have a starting point of where we're, uh, where we're going with our strategy. Uh, so who are your customers going to be? Um, and we're not giving names to these people, we're looking for characteristics, things that will help us find them later. Where are they located? Uh, uh, are they um, um, physical, geographically close? Are they 25 miles away? Or uh, when we're talking about social media, where are they located um, on, the, uh, on the internet? Are they on Facebook? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Instagram? Uh, are they on Pinterest? Where are they located? Where do they go? When do they decide to buy your product? That's very important because when do you need to reach them? We know where they're located, but when do I need to reach them? For instance, if a bride is, uh, um, is going to be married in June, when do we start finding the, the June brides? Uh, they're gonna be buying their wedding gowns and so forth uh, 
way ahead of the June date. So when do you uh, when do they decide uh, to um, to buy your product? Why do they need your product? Uh, this comes down to uh, to figuring out the the real um, purpose of your product. For instance, uh, what does a flower shop sell? A flower shop does not sell flowers. A flower shop sells a way for you to express your sentiments. I'm sorry your Uncle Fred died. Congratulations on your anniversary. Go to the prom with me. Uh, that's the, the, the need that, that, um, that is serviced by the flower shop. So what do the, what do the brides need? They need a, uh, uh, something that will make them feel special on their special day, uh, that sort of thing. How will you find them or how will they find you? Where do you find brides and uh, bridesmaids? Uh, where, do they or where are they located? There are websites, there are magazines, there are, uh, there are uh, different uh, stores or maybe, um, maybe an expo or an event. And what is your product or service worth? Now, quick. Uh, what is your product or service worth? And this is not what it's worth to you, but what's it worth to the uh, to the client? Okay, uh, this is we look at the uh, the opportunists uh, after a after a disaster. Uh, somebody runs out there selling uh, bottles of water for ten dollars a piece. You know, if you're really in need of water, maybe you'll pay for it. Uh, we're not going to get into the morality of what your what your cost is, but what is your product or service worth? And the biggest question here is, as far as the customer, the target audience that you've selected, do they have the resources to pay for it? If your product is uh, selling for $1,000, is the target I've got in mind, do they have um, $1,000 of uh, spendable income? Uh, so we need to, uh, uh, we need to uh, discover that. Marketing, uh, this is a sort of a traditional um, marketing funnel that says, if you look at the, uh, the top of the chart, a whole bunch of people get to be aware. This is when you do your Facebook boost and it goes out to 10,000 people. Uh, you get, um, you get uh, uh, 10,000 people in, into the beginning of the funnel. This is where I'm trying to tell people about me. Now there are some people that look at that and they say, well, that's interesting and they click on it. Uh, so they're interested in what you're talking about. And that's obviously a much smaller group. And then uh, we're, going to, uh, we're going to bring them uh, to your website uh, where they're going to consider their options for purchase or delivery or colors or whatever. And they're going to decide that, okay, this is what I want, and they're going to spend the money. Obviously, a smaller group um, than uh, up here. And then finally, the folks who have made, uh, made the decision they need something that's an even smaller group. When we look at social media uh, marketing, this number here in the purchase area is somewhere between one and 2%. So uh, it takes a lot of people going into the funnel to come out with the uh, number of sales that, uh, that you're going to need. We'll go into a little bit later here. You need to know how much did it cost you to get the people from the funnel, from the top of the funnel down to the uh, purchase. So the stat strategy is used to create a desire to purchase. What can I do to get people to, to buy my, uh, my mechanical widgets? Okay. I just built the widget, but how do I get people to, to know that and how am I gonna get them to want it? Well, my, my little widget um, maybe sits on the top of my uh, television set and um, um, turns on the lights whenever I walk into the room. Okay, so uh, how do I create the desire in my customer to, uh, potential customer to actually get interested in this? Uh, the marketing also creates your company image. What kind of an image are you portraying? Is it a professional image? Is it a family image? Is it a corporate image? Uh, is it an artistic image? And then marketing is anything you can do to get and keep a customer. And then the, the, the Main caveat here is your product or service will not sell itself. Okay. 
And, and Len, if, if I may add to this uh, real quick, it's, um, it's also about differentiating yourself. What's going to make customers go to your ice cream store or your boutique or your convenience store, your business than others that are offering almost exactly the same service. So that's a very important part of, of branding, marketing, differentiating yourself. Definitely. Uh, as a, uh, an example of that is um, I had a client come in last, last year who wanted to start a bar in downtown Springfield. Uh, I asked him to look up how many bars there already were in downtown Springfield and that exact question, how, if you open a bar, how can you get all of these uh, people to come to your bar instead of the other uh, 50 options that they have? So that's a uh, uh, differentiation is definitely key. Okay, uh, what should be in your marketing plan? A general description of your service or product, uh, which includes the function. Uh, what does it do? Why is it different or special? Uh, and then customers. There are uh, customers in the market and there are customers who will likely uh, buy from you. So uh, we need to know who to focus on. So your uh, marketing uh, uh, plan or strategy here is to uh, figure out which customers you're gonna focus on. What issue or need will you solve for them? And does it save time or money? Now your product can be multifunctional. Your product could, uh, could uh, give me clean water and it could also cool the water, okay? So I've got two functions for my little machine, okay? Uh, so uh, when we look at that and I do my advertising or marketing, I'm gonna market the one need, I, you need to have clean water. So the filtering that my machine does is the message for the day and the issue or need that I'm trying to target. Then the next day, uh, it's in the middle of summer and people want cool water um, straight from the tap. So now we're, gonna, we're going to market to that need. But in describing your product, you need to be specific about what does the, the need that you're trying, to, uh, you're trying to satisfy. And then how do you plan to reach them? Are you going to, um, uh, are you going to uh, go to a chamber uh, mixer and shake hands with everybody? Are you going to go to some sort of a, an online event and uh, make a presentation so people get to, know, get to know you? Are you going to send out an email or a, a, a newsletter uh, to get to folks? Are you going to boost something on Facebook? How do you plan to reach that, uh, those clients? And then the uh, competition. Established competition already has a group of customers. Why would I want to go to your place instead of the place I've been going to for the last five years? Your place is new. I don't know who you are, what you do. I haven't seen your advertising yet. Uh, so what alternatives do these people have or who else can provide your solution to your customers? And then a marketing budget. One of the things that we need to evaluate in this process is how much did I spend and what kind of a return did I get? So that means in building your your plan, you need to figure out what it's going to cost to execute this and then measure the results you got. If you spend $100 and somebody comes and buys a $10 widget, that was not a particularly successful campaign. Uh, we want a good return on that uh, advertising dollar that we put out there. Len, do you find sometimes that people underestimate the amount of money that they budget for marketing? Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, th there are two problems with, uh, with the marketing uh, budget. One is uh, failing to realize how many times they need to market. Uh, in other words, they, they think they, if they do it once on Monday, that's enough. Uh, and then they underestimate what, that, what that's going to cost them uh, to reach their goal. Uh, we, we talked in the beginning about figuring out what your goal is. Every campaign has, should have a goal. I want to get 10 people to my website. I want to sell 15 shirts. Uh, whatever the goal of that, uh, of that um, uh, campaign is. Uh, and then you have to have a budget that relates to it. And people are always underestimating how much they need to get the word out in order to uh, get the result that they're looking for. And what do you think about the 
sort of national average in a way that you should be spending about 5% of what your sales are. So, so if you're hoping in your example of the shoe store, if you're hoping to make $100,000, we would expect there should be about $5,000 in that budget. What do you think about that? Uh, we generally say 6%, but uh, okay. uh, when you're setting a budget, it's all kind of a um, experiment. Uh, marketing is not a precise science because you're not precisely reading, uh, reaching a machine. You're reaching people with different sets and values. So uh, there are so many elements to the, the message that you're sending out. You're going to a platform, you're going to an audience, you've got a, a message and you've got a method for them to get in touch with you. The first time you send out your, 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 um, your advertising, you may have gotten at least one of those things wrong. And you think that, oh, well, Facebook doesn't work. No, part of it, did your message resonate? Uh, should you have changed your message? So the next time you do it, you change the message and check that out. Uh, and then did the audience, was that audience correct? Was I trying to reach too large of an audience instead of trying to focus on my people? Uh, and then uh, that's all part of the, uh, the marketing estimate or budget for, that you have to uh, calculate. So 6% is what you use. So again, this, this $100,000 shoe store, if we looked at their finances, we'd want to see about $6,000 set aside for marketing. That's great. Yeah. As a starting point, definitely. That's great. We have a question in the chat, Len. Yeah. Um, are there any rules about marketing when it's a busy season versus marketing when it's slow? Should I stop marketing when it's busy? Uh, well, uh, the real world of this thing is when you don't have any business, that's the time to market. Okay. When the business is all out there, that's the time you capitalize on the marketing you did in the slow time. Uh, you need to be able to give people um, the opportunity to buy. And that comes down to, we're going to cover that a little bit, uh, a, a little bit later on. Uh, but basically uh, uh, as we mentioned in the, in the beginning, when do people buy? Uh, if it's a, um, a spur of the moment or a spontaneous purchase, that's what the end caps in uh, Walmart are for. They, there are things they want you to buy because these are appropriate for this time and this season. Um, yes, uh, you should uh, uh, reinforce that you're in the market and that you have a product. Uh, it should reinforce the, the overall marketing that you've done before, but I would not begin marketing in the middle of the busy season. I would start to set your image before you get to the busy season and use that as uh, uh, capitalizing on what you've already done. Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, I think, that's a, I think that's a great answer. But I also think though, Len, when we talk about the busy season, let's say it is retail, that tends to be September to December, would it make some sense to have the amount of marketing mirror where the sales traditionally come in? I see what you're saying about when you're not busy, let's bring in business. But we do know for certain businesses that the business is focused in particular periods of time. Would it make sense when you look at that $6,000 budget, let's say for the shoe store, maybe there's more towards the going back to school, you know, there's more towards the holidays when we we traditionally know that people are out buying shoes. Well, if we use that same standard uh, that we talked about before, the five or six percent, uh, if you're if you're targeting sales of uh, ten thousand uh, dollars for the month of uh, November, then you should be spending six hundred dollars. If you if you're uh, uh, targeting uh, a month uh, where you're only planning on a thousand dollars, then you should be spending sixty dollars. Uh, Got it. Uh, so uh, yes, um, uh, using that uh, six percent formula, you would track it. Now your your uh, your experience is going to tell you whether six percent is enough or maybe three percent is enough. But you can't tell that until you get started, and that's where that starting percentage comes from. Uh, oh, here's a razzle dazzle slide. <laughs> okay. What are the features, advantages, and benefits of your product? Very, very important to uh, get those in front of the audience. How do you differentiate from your competitor? We're gonna keep saying this over and over and over again. How are you different? If you're a coffee shop, what is the difference in your coffee shop? What do you provide that Starbucks doesn't provide already? 
How do you differentiate yourself? Why will the customer be pleased if they purchase from you? Sorry for the typo. Uh, why will the customer be pleased if they purchase it from you? Well, um, uh, we had an Italian restaurant in my hometown. And uh, there were several other uh, Italian restaurants within, uh, within driving distance. But when we went to Mama Valenti's, when we got in there, Mama would come out with her apron and she would greet us and she would uh, take us to the table, introduce us to the waiter or waitress. And um, uh, any of the kids, uh, she would tell them, uh, she promised them a, a dessert if they would finish their, all of their food and so forth. She would come back in the middle of the, uh, of the meal and check everything out, is everything okay? And Mama was the reason people went there. People felt comfortable, they felt it like it was like their home. Why will customers be pleased when they buy from you? What will you do? If you're doing landscaping, will you come back in two weeks and check on it even though I didn't call you? Why will a customer be pleased that they purchased it from you? Set yourself apart. What if anything is included with the product or service uh, in your price? Um, do you include, uh, for instance, I had a, a friend who owned an HVAC service, and uh, when he um, when he sold the uh, the air conditioning system, uh, he included an annual um, checkup on your machine, not the price of fixing it, but just to come out and uh, maybe clean the filter and uh, tell you that the machine was running right. So what are you including in your product or service that's in the price already that I don't have to think about buying from somebody else? This could also be a differentiation between your competitor. Does your competitor not include this? Uh, so you can beat them uh, with your product. Okay, so where uh, we talk about customer demographics, okay? Uh, I get people to come to, uh, that uh, come to me and I ask them, who are your customers? They say there, there are people who like golf. Uh, that's totally insufficient as a description. Where do these people live? What do they do for work? We know what their, uh, their uh, hobby is golf. Are they male or female? We know today that there are more female, female uh, golfers in the, in the growth pattern than there are males. Okay, should I be ta uh, um, targeting uh, females? Ethnicity, what uh, ethnic group uh, would be more interested in your, uh, in your product. Uh, what is the income of these people? Remember we talked about can they afford your product? Uh, so if you're selling something that is, um, that is uh, $500 a month, uh, my target audience is not people on food stamps. Okay? What are their hobbies? We said golfing. What else do they like to do? Uh, what do they do for recreation? How old are they, etc. And why do we need all this stuff? Because when we go to looking at the various social media platforms uh, or the uh, newspapers that people read or the places where people go to get their information are uh, determined uh, to a great extent by this uh, demographic pattern. <clears throat> How many potential uh, or focused customers or orders are there in, the, in that description? How many people would actually um, buy your product? Uh, We've got a, uh, a client who has a, um, uh, a music studio. Well, when we look at this, uh, at this customer demographic, how many people would need a music studio? Uh, and then we're gonna look at how far out does he need to take his market in order to get enough people to support a, a music studio? Is he uh, just going to be located in Springfield, Western Massachusetts? Does he have to go out to Boston? Uh, people looking for a, a recording studio, maybe uh, they would travel uh, 500 miles to get to a good recording studio. So how many potential customers are there in our market here? Are there any end users? Um, when we talk about end users, when we sell toys, if you're selling toys, your, um, your customer is not the child. Your customer is the person who buys the toy for the child. But then the end user is the child. And each child can be uh, an age, could be a, uh, a determinant. It could be uh, any physical disabilities or enhancements if they're particularly intelligent children, for instance. Um, so uh, we need to also know the end user of the product, not just the purchaser. 
how, where, and when do they look for your products or services? Okay. Uh, generally speaking, let's say use toys as an example. I might buy toys for a birthday celebration, or I might buy them in the holiday season for Christmas or uh, whatever holiday you're, uh, you're recognizing. When do they look for your products? Well, if I've got a Christmas present, I'm not gonna be looking for that on December 25th. I'm gonna start looking for that uh, according to the way stores are marketing somewhere around the end of October. Uh, but that is the marketing season for the toys that are gonna be given away on December 25th. So what about your product? When do people look for what, they're, uh, for what you're selling? Um, uh, it's important to know how they, how they purchase. And then the low hanging fruit. Who are your first targets? The people I know will buy this product. The people who have been standing behind you for months saying, I wish we would get that business started because I, really uh, I really wanna take advantage of your, uh, of your product. So those are the folks, um, those are the folks that, um, uh, that you're going to be reaching for. Um, sorry, I didn't so shut off my phone. Apologize for that. Uh, but it's important to know uh, who, um, uh, who you can sell to first. Uh, if you're going for a loan, uh, any bank is going to ask you who's customer number one. Uh, if you don't have an idea where, where that initial sale is coming from, then um, uh, they're not likely to pay attention to you. So we're talking about the low hanging fruit. I don't have to get up on the ladder. I got the stuff right here. This is the quickest, easiest um, um, sale I can make. Okay. I wanted to talk a second about marketing strategy versus the marketing plan. Then, uh, yes. If I may real quick, um, just before we move on to this part, um, just to reiterate what you just said about your low hanging fruit, um, here, I'll turn on my camera to, so folks can see me. Um, it's also about um, who is your target market, but the, a niche that you might be serving. For example, you mentioned a coffee shop, right? So how do a, a, a community local coffee shop can compete with a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks or something like that, right? Well, in a variety of, of ways. You mentioned one, which was, you know, the relationship building with your customers, the greeting at the door, all of that stuff. But what about the things that you serve? Um, if you happen to know that many of your customers are vegetarians, for example, you might have um, vegetarian treats being offered. Or if you happen to know many of your customers are um, have pets and dogs, maybe you have some pet treats that you sell right there at the door uh, for them to bring uh, to their pets. Things like that, things that can make, make you memorable, that people will remember having that experience of having been at your place or by a bar from you, you know, using your service. Yes, definitely. Uh, I used to have, um, uh, when I was uh, working in Brazil, um, I fell in love with uh, flan, okay? And um, uh, flan is everywhere down there. Uh, you can go to any restaurant or coffee shop or whatever, and you can buy flan, okay? There was this one shop that dressed up the flan. They put a, uh, you could get it with a chocolate sauce on the top and they would put a little, uh, a little um, uh, flour into the top of it, sort of a confectionery flour on the top. And it looked nice. And um, it, uh, it just went really well with the coffee, but it was a special flan. It wasn't like all the other stuff and there was other 50,000 stores in Brazil. Uh, so what sets you apart? What makes you different? And uh, uh, more unique to your uh, customer. Uh, honestly, when we look at uh, when we look at something like a restaurant, especially, um, people are looking for a uh, uh, depending on the style of restaurant. People are looking for a dining experience. Uh, the uh, I have a, a friend in uh, in China who owns a um, uh, owns a restaurant, and he doesn't advertise the food that he serves. He advertises the experience that you will have when you come to try my food. Uh, he talks about the ambiance. He talks about the, the service. He talks about the comfortable seating and the, and the uh, romantic lighting or whatever. And then he gets down to, oh, yeah, we have the best steaks in Beijing, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, what is, what is the need uh, that you're serving? Okay, 
So I wanted to talk about the difference between uh, marketing strategy and the marketing plan. Marketing strategy is how you plan to do things. For instance, uh, I got to find the right customers. I need to know my competition. I need to know uh, how big the market is, where it is, and what it is. I need a good description of my product, not just a nice chest. Um, I need to know how am I going to get it to the customer? Is it, uh, am I, are they going to come to me? Am I going to give it to a distributor who's going to take it out to different stores? Am I going to sell it on the internet? How am I going to get this out there? And then uh, the, the media tool chest. There some, uh, some folks are still using uh, traditional media as a primary source and others are into social media and which social media. Okay. And then we come to, uh, okay, that's my plan. This is what I'm going to do. But this is specifically what I'm going to do under the marketing plan. Uh, in, this, uh, in this example here, we're saying that in January, I'm going to do 10 Facebook posts and one newspaper post. And my, uh, my goal is to get eight of clicks or sales or whatever, okay? Um, uh, so we have, uh, we have uh, our target. And then uh, this other column that's not labeled here would be to, how much does this cost? How much for 10 Facebook booths? How much for one newspaper ad? That's my total. Uh, and then I can divide the number of hits or, or clicks or whatever, or purchases into that goal and say, well, these are going to cost me $50 a piece to get these people. And my product is a $400 product. So eh, maybe that's not bad. Okay. And at, at base, this is the seasonality thing we were talking about. Okay. Uh, um, I'm, my advertising goes down in, from April to July, uh, but my newspaper ads go up um, for whatever demographic reason. And my targets change month by month, uh, and my um, my uh, uh, budget will uh, um, will fluctuate with whatever I do in the, the Facebook and newspaper. The other column that probably should be on here is what message are you going to sell? For instance, if I'm selling uh, shirts and shoes in January, which one am I advertising? Am I advertising the shirts in February? In which case, all of my Facebook posts or and the newspaper are going to both be, um, be advertising the charts. Uh, so we're trying to make sure we're selling a, sending a unified message and I can plan that in advance because I know my cycles, I know uh, what I'm gonna sell when uh, uh, in general, and then I set my targets. It can't be just the dollars. It needs to be the actions that people take that lead to the dollars. Because let's face it, you're not advertising to a dollar, you're not advertising to a checkbook, you're advertising to an individual. So how many individuals do you need to reach in January and are 10 Facebook posts and a newspaper ad sufficient to get eight people uh, to buy, okay? So uh, uh, the, the marketing plan uh, lists your specific activities and what it's gonna cost you and what the goals are for each of those specific activities. Uh, any questions? Can I ask you a question, please, um, yeah. on behalf of some of the folks that are in the webinar today. When we talk about the marketing message and you refer to your friend um, who has a restaurant that focuses on the experience, in what ways and how can we best change our marketing message? Because now, if in in the past, we were selling the experience of shopping in our store, dining in our restaurant, coming to our place. Now with pickup, takeout, curbside service, we've really lost that ability to translate that experience to them. We're not gonna have people hanging around in our locations. And we're finding that the people who are doing best are the ones that sort of dropped that message rather quickly because it's not relevant and really picked up on what is the new customer. So maybe the customer need six months ago was to go out and have a lovely relaxing dinner. Now, now the need is to get good quality, tasty food that's safely delivered. You know, it's, it's, it's a different experience. Can you talk a little bit about the way COVID-19 needs to challenge businesses to remarket what what it is they're doing yeah it's important even without the COVID-19 it's very important to be able to pivot your business based on uh, on what's going on in your uh, marketplace um, 
Uh, probably a, a good example is all of the places that have gone online. Now, what's uh, a good experience when you're ordering food, okay? Uh, we've got a client who uh, uh, owns a uh, farm store in Amherst. And uh, this guy said, uh, I've got to find people. Uh, and they're not coming by the store because they're afraid of the COVID. So what he did was he went online, he found a, a really great uh, inventory ordering system. He in, inputs all of his inventory. So uh, uh, if you order a, a bottle of milk, it takes a, a, a bottle out of the inventory and so forth. So you can go online, you can see his entire inventory in his store. You click on the items that you want, it tells you what it is, it adds it up at the end and, and you can check out and PayPal or whatever. Uh, and then you sign up for a time to, uh, to appear at his store, in which case you drive up, they take the, your bags that are already uh, all ready for you and they put them in your car and they go away. Uh, the offshoot of that uh, is that his sales this year are 400% higher than last year. Uh, in addition to that, he's running out of inventory. He, his own farm cannot produce enough material to now satisfy the customers. So he's buying produce from other farms to sell in his store uh, and uh, building his business even more that way. So he pivoted that way. Then we've got, um, then we've got uh, teachers, uh, tutors. Uh, if they weren't online, they're online now because that's what's going on. Um, when it comes to um, um, products like, um, um, uh, let's say, um, a, a special saw uh, that I'm going to use for my, uh, for my project, uh, now it's important for me to provide not only the fact that you can buy a saw that I can deliver, but I'm going to give you a video that shows you how to use it. Uh, just other different ways of thinking uh, outside the box. Finding a new, uh, a new, uh, a new market. Okay, uh, students in, um, in um, the Northampton, Hadley, Amherst area were a big part of the marketplace, but students for a long time all went home and as they come back, they're coming back in smaller numbers. So how does a business that's been focused on students stay alive? They have to find a new market, a new reason uh, for people to come and visit them. Uh, it's important to pivot the business uh, with uh, trends and, and techniques. I think it's also important for you to try stuff you've never tried before and try to sell to people that you've never sold before and to come up with different ways that your product can be used. Um, um, uh, therapist, okay, Every, more people need uh, uh, therapy today than they did before the COVID thing. They've got financial pressures, emotional pressures, disease pressures, everything around them. So what is your marketing and how are you going to handle these people if you can't meet them face to face? So uh, pivoting is very important. Um, did, that, did I answer that, Anita? Yeah, I, I think that's great. And just a thought as well is that if people belong to industry groups, um, again, if we go to food, the Specialty Food Association, but there's industry groups for every single category that they're really keeping track of trends. And just a, a real short note, they're finding in the food world that this meal kit is just exploding because people are kind of bored, you know? So at the end of the day, they want to make something, but they don't want to go and gather all the ingredients. So the meal kit business is significantly up. And so to build on that, Dunkin' Donuts is now selling in test markets. Um, the, you know, they have those, lo those long flat boxes. It's a half a dozen donuts. And then it's six different frostings and four different toppings. So you can basically bring a box home and you've got six donuts and you could sort of put coffee frosting and chocolate sprinkles and someone else can do glazed. And, you know, so they're trying to build on that make it at home, have a little bit of fun. So here's a major, major chain thinking, okay, let's look and see. So that's what they're test marketing right now. So just a great way to pivot. I mean, are they going to do it forever? No, but it's going to draw a lot of attention. And I guess a lot of people are going to buy it because it's different and interesting and something to just shake up the monotony of people eating at home all the time. Really? So, Yeah, and um, I'll add to that real quick, another story. Chess Joseph in Aguam. Oh, wow. 
has to go. And she has to go. They were doing individual meals. Now they're doing family meals too. That's and for great. parties, catering, they deliver to you 20, 20, 20, 20, 30 minute drive around there. Um, uh, they have a minimum order, but it's not that much. I think it's like 15 or $20. And, um, and they have a great variety. And here's, here's a 30 plus year business, you know, family owned mm -hmm. business that's pivoting and that's uh, looking for ways to really serve the, the customers in the community that are surrounding them. That's great. That's tough one. There we go. Ways uh, trying to uh, short circuit the uh, transitions here. Okay, ways to reach your target customers. Word of mouth. Word of mouth has always historically been the most effective way to reach your customers. And you're still doing word of mouth. Facebook is word of mouth. It's more like talking over the, the back fence than it, than it is about a newspaper. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, all of these things are word of mouth. Uh, digital marketing uh, mirrors the word of mouth uh, model. We're trying to get personal. Uh, we're trying to get uh, visual. We're trying to see each other, uh, touch our, each other digitally. Shows, conventions, fairs, and associations. Uh, those are still out there. A lot of them are going virtual and some of them are very successful. Uh, and should you be in a show? Uh, what is, uh, are you allowed to sell in a show? Uh, where, what shows are your customers uh, interested in? And if you're going to exhibit in a show, you uh, need to market that show so that people will actually go to the show to find you fairs and associations, as Anita mentioned, the industry associations. Um, so how do you reach your customers? Uh, I can use a salesperson. I can use a distributor. Uh, I can sell my products to a retail outlet like uh, Target or uh, Walmart. I can put uh, stuff in a catalog. Uh, these days, it's a virtual catalog, uh, such as an Amazon site or uh, Etsy or whatever. Those are really catalogs. Uh, referrals. I can, uh, I can come up with a little thing that says, uh, uh, since you just bought for me, if you, uh, if you get somebody else to come, I'll give you $10 off your next order and 10% and off for your, for your referral. Uh, alliances, well, those are really great. Alliances are like, um, if uh, I'm running a, a, a bridal boutique and Anita is running a flower shop, we get together and we cross market. I can sell her flowers uh, out of my uh, shop, give a referral to her, uh, and we market each other on our uh, respective websites. Mailers, mailers are still, uh, still effective. Brochures, um, whether it's online or otherwise, and business cards now, uh, we're, uh, we're approaching uh, digital business cards uh, as another way. Social media. Uh, you can't have, in my opinion, you can't have an effective social media campaign if you don't have a website. So start with the website. And then we look at um, uh, designing that website with, the, with your marketing in mind. For instance, if I'm going to advertise shirts and shoes on Facebook uh, and somebody uh, clicks on it and you, I'm going to your front page, I've got to go through three clicks before I find the shirts. On the other hand, if I have a page on the website, specifically for shirts, and then I'm going to advertise shirts in Facebook, I'm gonna send them straight to the, to the shirts page, and I got there in one click. Uh, the real world is you've got about three seconds to get my attention when I go to your website. If you're buried too deep in clicks, I may not make it to where you want me to go. And if I look at that page and it doesn't say shirts to me right away, I'm gonna get bored and go find another site that satisfies my need a little bit better. So your website is not only critical, but it needs to be integrated with whatever you're going to do from a marketing standpoint. So plan the marketing as you're building your website. Uh, then there are promotions, free samples. You see them in the stores all the time. Uh, uh, somebody's always handing out bits of cheese or dips or sausages or whatever. Uh, and then bulletin boards. There are digital online bulletin boards, I think, uh, uh, does Mass Live have a bulletin board? Um, uh, a number of uh, local um, uh, local media signage on your store or your location. Okay, uh, the signage that we're looking at when you go to the website is that that banner that comes out at the top. That would be a, a signage on your store. 
Um, what does the sign say? Uh, people driving by, are they attracted to your sign? Does your sign give them a grabber or just say Pete's store? Uh, what kind of things are we doing with our signage? Advertisements. Um, well, uh, this was at a time when Yellow Pages Online was still working. Um, but you could do uh, advertisements, a uh, listing on uh, online uh, um, yellow pages, if you will. And then uh, local newspapers. People are still advertising in local newspapers because there is a percentage of the population that actually reads the local newspapers. Uh, my son is not one of them. He hasn't read a newspaper since he graduated from high school, but uh, there are people that's still reading it. Uh, public relations, independent endorse endorsements. Uh, some sports figure comes up and says, I tried that, that uh, take home lunch and uh, it was really great. So, well, if uh, the sports figure likes it, maybe I should try it. Uh, and then repetition. Keep repeating your name uh, or your brand. Uh, get it on your car when you're driving around, even if it's, even if you've got an online business, how are you going to keep that in front of people? Make sure that you're uh, that your num name keeps coming up in, uh, in searches and in uh, Facebook posts, Instagram, whatever, remind people you're there. How do you think we got to know that Coca-Cola actually means some sort of a soft drink? Coca-Cola, the name Coca-Cola means nothing uh, until you are familiar with what Coca-Cola has done. Uh, when you look at GE, okay, the, the GE doesn't tell you anything about what the, uh, what the company is doing. But it's through repetition and, and, uh, and longevity that people keep uh, uh, forming uh, a strong impression of what your business is and what you can do for them. Pricing, oh, this is a really great uh, question. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to, uh, whoops, uh, to uh, define pricing. You're gonna make me do that again. Okay, a lot of different ways to, uh, to figure out your pricing. Uh, one of the first, uh, one of the first um, decisions that you make in pricing, are you going to be uh, one of uh, three categories? Are you gonna be the price leader, the price follower, or the, always the low price? The price leader is always more expensive than everybody else. The price uh, follower is always uh, some number, maybe 10% cheaper than the price leader. The price leader goes up, the price follower goes up. The price leader comes down, the price follower comes down. But there's always that, that uh, difference between their, um, their, their pricing. And then low price is always at least one penny or one dollar less than the lowest price uh, up above. Okay, that's one, uh, one compartment to think about. Uh, how much value does the customer perceive in your product? Uh, if you're, we're talking about uh, uh, an ink pen, what is an ink pen, uh, a ballpoint pen, worth to you? Uh, uh, would you pay $50 for a, a ballpoint pen? Um, why do you need uh, a price schedule? Okay, A price schedule basically defines for you and for people who uh, are working with you that um, um, this pen is a uh, dollar. If you buy 50 pens, my price schedule says that you can get them for 75 cents. If you buy them for um, in bulk of a thousand, then you can get them for 60 cents or whatever. But the price schedule keeps you on target when you're negotiating with people. The price schedule also needs to tell you what's your bottom line on this. So if you're trying, if you're talking with a distributor or somebody wants to uh, put your uh, put your product in their store, how low can you go and still make money for you? So you need a price schedule to figure that out. And don't try to figure it out on the fly um, because you'll always make a mistake. What about payment terms? How are you gonna charge people? Uh, if, I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to do the landscaping in your backyard, um, what about payment terms? Well, first of all, mostly uh, if you're taking upfront money, it's usually to cover the, the cost of the whole project. Uh, that would be the deposit. The profit is uh, I can charge later on, but what I need upfront is enough to buy the materials to do your job. Um, and then uh, what about payment terms? Uh, I'm gonna take, uh, 
50% up front. Uh, we're going to take 25% when the lawn is in. And I'm going to take uh, another 10% when all the flowers are in. And then when you approve it, I'm going to give you the last, uh, the last payment. But whatever it is, you need to figure out what your payment terms might be. Keeping in mind that uh, after it's in, if I'm going to give payment terms of 30, 60, 90 days, these people are using your money. You've already done the work. And if you give them 90 day terms, they get to use your money for 90 days. Um, so uh, are they practical for you? Most startup businesses will say no. Um, uh, and you'd have to figure out uh, a front, upfront charge. For instance, if I'm going to uh, come to your wedding and take pictures, uh, am I gonna have an upfront charge on that? Probably. What guarantees policy uh, uh, and policies do you have on returns? Um, I'm reminded of L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean had a uh, philosophy. If you bought from us, you could return that product to us anytime and get your money back based on current pricing. Uh, the problem with that was they started giving back. Um, I, I think the last term, I, uh, the last number I heard was $5 million a year. They gave back on returns. And what people were doing was they're putting their hunting boots up for sale in a flea market. And then people would go in and buy those hunting boots for two bucks. And then they would take them back to L.L. Bean based on their lifetime guarantee. They would take them back to L.L. Bean and L.L. Bean would give them 50 bucks for the boots. So you have to be careful about how you set your guarantees and your policies on your returns. It has to be reasonable. And this is also a selling point. So what do, uh, what do people consider uh, is a good guarantee um, or a policy on return? What discounts will you give? Um, are you going to organize a sale? Um, uh, in which case, what prices am I going to charge there? Introductory offers. The big problem with starting with a lower price is that, uh, as the next uh, item tells you here, lowering your price is always easier than raising it. So in the first couple of weeks, you sold me that for $10. And now here, uh, two months later, and now this thing is $20. I don't think it, I, I, it was definitely worth the $10, but now I got to make an assessment of whether it really was worth $20 in the first place. So uh, it's easier, it's better to start with a higher price and then offer a reduction. And you find stores, uh, JCPenney is a good example of this. JCPenney advertises a $30 shirt. But what do they do? They give out coupons. They give a coupon for $10 and even the sales clerk will give you the coupon for $10. So uh, now that you're paying uh, $20 for the shirt, but did you buy a $30 shirt or a $20 shirt? Uh, you can go home and brag that I just bought this $30 shirt, but it only cost me $20. And that's the way that they, uh, they really could have sold it for $20. And they actually tried that. Uh, they changed the CEO and said, these coupons are stupid. Uh, everybody knows it's a $20 shirt. Uh, so JCPenney canceled all of their uh, coupons uh, and didn't offer any coupons. They reduced the prices to what they were, and they lost uh, about 30% of their business in, uh, in less than three months. Uh, the, the moral of that story was people like a deal. So uh, they wanted to buy a $30 shirt for $20, part of that experience, okay? So uh, the price, um, <coughs> excuse me, it's the last uh, um, <coughs> point here. The price may define the value in the customer's mind. We talked about um, uh, the value of your product. How does the customer perceive the value? First, they're going to find. They're going to ask you, um, not literally, but they're going to be looking to see what do you value it for. If you've got two uh, two coffee mugs on the table, and one of them is a five dollar coffee mug, and the other one is fifteen dollars. I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say the $15 one really needs to have something special. Does it? And if it does have something special in it, then your $15 uh, set the value in my mind as being worth more than the other one. Even though the extra feature you added may have only cost 10% more. So the value you, set, you put on them can set the price. Conversely, if you price it too low, I'm going to look at that and say, well, I always pay $5 for a cup but here's one for $2. I don't think that thing's going to be um, going to last in my dishwasher. So you have to be uh, careful about setting your price too low as well. 
so what is your message? Uh, when you provide a, a service, the customer needs to know, uh, uh, needs your assurance and uh, needs to know that you have strong credibility. Okay, can I believe you? Um, used car uh, salesmen have a big problem with that credibility feature, okay? You don't need that same kind of credibility uh, gap. Uh, when you provide a service, references from satisfied customers goes a long way. I had a lawn done and you came and did my lawn. Uh, you did my neighbor's lawn, so I, uh, and that looks great. So uh, yes, licenses. When you provide a service, do you need a special license to do that, uh, that service in my community? Do you need any certifications? Do you need a, uh, um, a, a permit? Uh, um, uh, what is the detailed description of what you're gonna be doing and how long is it gonna take you? Um, as well as what do I have to do in order for you to be successful at my contract. So all of that stuff needs to be up front. I want to know what your guarantee is, and I want to know that you have liability insurance. So if you, um, if you do something like striking a water main or uh, something of that nature, that you're going to pay for it, not me. Len, we had an example. We were working with a contractor and they were getting their, they bought new trucks and they were getting their trucks wrapped. And um, they had, it just was the name of the company before and, and the phone number. And they wound up adding the website and they also put licensed, bonded, and insured. And they put their license number, their actual contractor license number on the truck. And they have seen their sales just go up. You know, there, and there's really no other explanation for it. Yes, people are having some work done at this time because they're home a lot, but they just felt that that really meant a lot to people because it avoided the embarrassment of someone having to say, you know, are you licensed? Because yeah. that's, that's hard when a, when a handyman or a repair person comes to the house, unless they're a valid company, but they're just a private company, a lot of people feel awkward about asking to see their license. So they literally put it on the side of the truck and, um, and they've absolutely seen an increase. And I think that that's great because you have to go through all this. So why not really be upfront with it. And if there's two trucks sitting there and one says contractor license number, whatever, license bonded insured, and the other one just says, you know, Joe Smith, you know, which, which one are you going to think has more credibility? So. Yeah. Well, this applies to almost any business that you're, that you're looking for. Um, guarantees. If I go into a restaurant, you're going to like it or it's free. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, licenses or certifications, uh, especially for professional people. If you're tutoring children, you want to make sure you have a teaching license, uh, that you have some other certification, maybe from, uh, there's a National Association for Tutors. Um, it, just things that add credibility to what you're, to what you're offering. So, Next, Len, uh, Len, there is a question um, in the chat, and it was, um, someone was given business advice that they don't need an LLC until year two. If the, if the first year is simply word of mouth and, and then the second year they would actually get into it. So can you explain the positives and the negatives of formalizing licenses and certifications right in the beginning versus getting started in a more informal way and then solidifying because the LLC it's going to cost $500 right to, to establish it and then $500 a year going forward. So what are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, business is all about managing risk. Okay. So uh, there are two ways to manage risk. Um, one way is through your company structure. If you get an LLC, then the only thing that's exposed for lawsuits, et cetera, uh, is your, uh, all of the assets that you've identified as part of your LLC. The other way to protect yourself is with insurance. Um, you, can, uh, you can buy a, a liability insurance up to a certain limit, et cetera, and you can get an umbrella insurance that will cover you even further uh, than that. So as you're building your business, you have to determine how much risk do I have? Can I cover that risk with an insurance policy, um, which can be cheaper than the, uh, than the LLC, 
or do I need to go right straight to the LLC? I can tell you that about 80% of our clients start with a sole proprietorship. Uh, and uh, uh, especially during the time when they're organizing their business, some of our, uh, some of our clients take six, eight, even a year to, uh, uh, to get their business started. It doesn't make sense to set up an LLC for that time when you're, um, when you're uh, just organizing. Mm -hmm. uh, conversely, if you're going to borrow some money, uh, sole proprietors are not very successful in convincing the bank that they're a viable organization. Uh, LLC or S corps or C corps are much better from a financing standpoint. So all of that enters into the into the into the question. Now, uh, from a tax standpoint, um, the uh, LLC is not much different from a uh, uh, from a sole proprietor, they're both filed on your 1040 form uh, with different uh, with different attachments. Um, so uh, it's very easy to move from a sole proprietor up to an LLC, and probably this person got uh, got that advice uh, from whoever gave it to them based on what they perceive their exposure will be over that time frame. Uh, and then there's the, the question, if I'm just providing um, um, uh, um, online content in a virtual situation, uh, what's my odds of getting, uh, getting sued? Um, that's the decision. And it's up to the owner to decide how to manage that risk with the, uh, with the business construction or with uh, insurance. Is uh, that? Uh, Thank you. Okay. Once we get into social media, we have this question of, is your message clear? What are you trying to say? If you're approaching this, uh, this intersection here, wouldn't you say there'd be a little bit of confusion uh, about what to do at this, uh, this intersection? Okay. So we don't want that to happen to your message. We want you to cut through all this stuff and get down to the real, to the real uh, message of what you're trying to tell your customers. Len, did you, did you Photoshop all those signs in there? Uh, I think the original presenter did that. Uh, although it looks, uh, is that a real photo? Uh, they tell me it came from Florida, but I don't know. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the point is well taken. You know, you don't want to go the, your marketing message in all different directions, back and forth, and back and forth. So. Really. Uh, I've seen that, I actually have seen this uh, at a hospital parking lot. Um, this is definitely uh, confusing. I love that one. Come in, but don't come in. <laughs> really? Okay. So what is your message? When you provide a product the customer has concerns about, will it perform? Uh, what's the quality of this? Um, and how am I going to get it? Uh, what's it going to cost? And you'll notice that it, when you buy an automobile these days, they tell you what the one-year uh, cost of ownership is. Um, is it price competitive? Uh, they're going to be looking you up on the looking the product up on the internet to see what your competitors are uh, are charging for it. And what if it doesn't work? What am I? What do I do about it? Um, and then, do I have any options of leasing it instead of buying it, renting it? Uh, and what are your return policy? Um, uh, this what if it doesn't work is a really uh, really a good one. Uh, I'm reminded of a um, uh, of a review that a restaurant got um, um, on um, Facebook or whatever um, earlier. It was an Italian restaurant, and the reviewer uh, uh, put on there um, that was absolutely. I was there last night, and it, I got the absolute worst lasagna I've ever had in my entire life. Don't visit these people. And the owner came on, and uh, the owner, who is um, lifelong Italian, uh, responded by saying, what do you know about this? You're not, you're not Italian. You're not a cook. Oh, How, no. You have no right uh, uh, reviewing my food because you don't have the credentials to decide what's a good or a bad dish. Okay. So what does that tell me? about what you're, going to, uh, what you're going to tell me, should I come into your restaurant and not like your lasagna? Uh, so what we need to do is send the message, um, what if it doesn't work? 
bring it back, we'll give you a full refund, or we'll give you another one in place of it, or whatever. You need to be very clear about what happens if I'm not happy about what you're doing. Uh, in your message, we need to make sure that your message is simple. Don't use big, long words. Use words. Uh, the military, for example, writes their tech documents on a sixth grade level because they don't want anybody confused about what they're which button they should push if they're in a nuclear si silo, okay? So keep it simple. Uh, but we need that wow factor, that, oh, unexpected, uh, unexpected thing here. Add five years to your life, try this. Um, some unexpected part of the, uh, of the message. Make sure it's con concrete. Words like, we'll make it better, are not concrete. They're very general. Uh, so we can improve um, uh, we can improve the yield in your crops by ten percent, or um, we'll get you a, a twice the return on your money. Something something specific. If you're making um, um, what's that commercial uh, on uh, um, uh, fifteen minutes saves you fifteen percent? Uh, anybody it's remember that? Geico? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, they're very specific about that. You give us 15 minutes and we're going to give you a 15% discount or, uh, or reduction from where you're, where you're paying. And is that credible? Uh, I see so many advertising making such huge uh, promises uh, and I've never heard them before. Am I likely to, uh, to do business with them? Uh, how credible are they? Uh, if, I, um, if they don't have a storefront or they don't have a website, uh, maybe they don't have that credibility. Uh, and then does your, emo does your message go to emotion? For instance, uh, I have a client who sells a smoke detector. And everybody sells smoke detectors, five bucks here, 10 bucks there, whatever. Hey, you can get a smoke detector anywhere, but she charges 250 bucks for her, uh, for her smoke detector. Uh, and the way she sells her smoke detector, it's got features in it. It's specifically designed for caretakers who have um, um, somebody they're taking care of, living on their own, but has some uh, mental challenges. So her smoke detector, when it goes off, comes up with a recording that says, Johnny, uh, the smoke detector just went off. You need to get dressed, go out back, uh, and wait by the tree. Then it dials the caretaker, and it says, the smoke detector's just gone off. I've given directions to Johnny to go out back uh, and wait by the tree. And then it dials 911 and it gives the address and location. It says there is a mentally challenged individual who lives here. He's been instructed to go out back uh, and wait by the tree. So um, there is a certain amount of emotion in there. I'm appealing to the caretaker that says, do you wanna protect Johnny? Do you really wanna feel comfortable about Johnny living alone? Uh, this is the emotion that I'm trying to attach to my product. And then tell stories. Uh, stories about people who've had an experience with your product, those are really, really effective. I tried this, and, uh, and here's a picture of the, new uh, of the tomatoes I got uh, using your product, that kind of thing. The message is important. Look at the sign above this, uh, above this cafe. Everybody knows the, the TV series, but wouldn't it be nice if you had a, a place in your town called the Good Friends Cafe? Uh, what's the message it's sending? It's sending uh, the idea that uh, this is a friendly pace, a place to key off the sign. Uh, and not just friends, but good friends. That means if you come in the door to buy a cup of coffee, you're in a relationship automatically here. Okay. So the messaging uh, is very important. What is, what is social media? Characteristics of social media is that it's user generated. It's user curated. That means that you write the stuff and, and uh, you uh, critique it yourself, you modify it yourself, you allow people to, um, to um, post on your site, you reject people from your site. You're creating the whole thing. You're in charge of that media for your, uh, for your uh, silo. And then social media is about text, photos, audio, videos, and chat. Uh, all of these things are experiences. Uh, when I see a photo, this old uh, adage of about uh, one photo is worth, uh, one picture is worth a thousand words. 
it's quite literally true in social media. Um, audio, uh, if I'm trying to sell a song, we want to catch this, or maybe um, uh, some uh, specific instructions, videos, uh, and social media is free, no big deal. And there's no big media uh, needed. So you don't need contracts and all of that sort of stuff or subscriptions or whatever. So social media is really uh, sort of um, uh, free form. Len, can you just talk about the concept though of it being free? Because I think that's the reason why when people are going to launch a business and have a business plan, they think, okay, we're going to use social media marketing and it's free, which causes there to be no budget. So even though it is free to be involved, are there expenses that people should incur to get the most out of it? Oh, like, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the emphasis on free here is primarily for the user, um, uh, the customer. If, uh, if we're going to reach people, whether it's in a newspaper or somewhere else, we need to do some tailored uh, things that are special above and beyond the basic uh, capabilities of a personal page. Uh, and when we're talking about uh, free, there are a number of elements there that make it not free for a business. One of which may be hiring somebody to construct your, your Facebook page. I've seen some horrible, horrible Facebook pages, but with a little bit of work and a better, uh, uh, better border um, uh, on the top or a better cover po uh, photo, uh, it could be really uh, jazzed up. Um, so uh, getting somebody to build that or somebody to build your, uh, your website, uh, those can carry costs. Uh, and then there is the advertising part of it. Uh, to get found, even if you're, uh, uh, you're trying to drive somebody to your Facebook page, uh, maybe a Google ad uh, is a good thing to do, but that costs money. Um, it's free for me to find you, but for you to be found is going to cost you something to put you out there. Same way with Facebook posts. When you post on your, uh, on your Facebook page, only the people who like or follow you are going to see what you post. To go out and grab new people, you have to advertise and that's going to cost you a fee depending on uh, how you uh, how you do that uh, how big of an audience you're trying to reach and how long you're trying to reach them so uh, free in the sense that it's available to your uh, to your audience not like a newspaper where you have to spend um, 45 cents or a dollar to buy the newspaper it's free uh, from the standpoint of the user okay but it's definitely not free from a business standpoint and shouldn't be free if you're attacking social media thinking that it's free, uh, it's kind of like the guy uh, in uh, Field of Dreams who built his little baseball field and said, you build it and they will come. That was a total lie. Um, <laughs> okay. So you're going to have to pay to be found. Um, uh, and that goes back to the, um, to the chart we showed earlier. You need to figure out what you want to do and is there a cost and how much cost. And uh, Len, I, we, we had the social media um, basics uh, webinar on Monday, and uh, we talked a lot about Facebook and uh, the various, uh, I think there was some about Instagram and different things. So that webinar is available uh, on our Facebook page right now. I'll put the link on the chat in just a minute, and it will be available on our YouTube channel um, uh, sometime tomorrow or early next week. Very good. Uh, which social media do you want to be involved with? This is an older chart. Half of these things are gone now and they're uh, replaced by uh, just as many new ones. But there is a huge um, uh, number of options out there, depending on who your audience is. Uh, for instance, we can see these sites are broken out by document content, gaming sites, music sites, um, uh, picture sites, um, videos, uh, that sort of stuff. There's a lot of different, here's blog searches, uh, all of that sort of stuff. How do you pick out which one is, is the one for you? So uh, just looking at a couple of these uh, sites, Facebook has more than two and a half billion potential customers. Those numbers can get rather staggering and they're also deceptive. Uh, let's say there are uh, 
uh, a million users in Bangladesh or uh, are you how, what's the odds of you selling something to uh, to somebody in Bangladesh okay so uh, it's an impressive number and all that means is that this is a big company and they've got a lot of resources okay you're still going to choose your audience by location age and interest okay they, they give you a um, uh, a good method of picking your audience. Now, this is with the paid uh, uh, advertising. Uh, and simple images and text uh, is basically the format. And on Twitter, microblogging um, uh, connects with customers and quickly shares information, very spontaneous sort of thing. Uh, when I was in Beijing, they were just using SMS on the telephone. Uh, so a store was having a, uh, uh, or a restaurant was having a special meal tonight, a deal on hot dogs, uh, and they would get on SMS and broadcast it to everybody in, in Beijing. Uh, so uh, microblogging is kind of like that, or Twitter is kind of like that. Gathering market intelligence and insights is one of the things that they can do for you, building relationships about your company. Spur the moment, quick, uh, quick comments. Then we have LinkedIn, which is um, um, generally more professional. Uh, it allows you to target your audience again, uh, which is important. Uh, they charge pay-per-click, uh, so does uh, Facebook and, uh, and um, Google Ads, um, or by impressions. Uh, this is another thing when you set your budget. Uh, you know, we looked at that funnel. We're gonna send it out to 10,000 people how many people are actually going to click on it? You're going to pay for all those people that click, whether it's uh, uh, 25 cents or a buck or even $6. Okay, what are you going to pay per click? And you can stop your campaign anytime, which is kind of un, um, very useful. Uh, YouTube is an online community. Uh, YouTube is becoming more and more popular all the time. Uh, it's, easy, it's easy to, uh, let's say, format a YouTube video than it is to work up a PowerPoint presentation like this. You just turn it on and talk. Uh, turn it on and share pictures or recordings or whatever. Uh, so YouTube is getting more and more uh, popular. Uh, you can share your videos and customer te testimonials. As uh, Samalit pointed out, um, these um, uh, webinars are being recorded and they'll be available on YouTube. Um, very easy for you to get to. Uh, and you can target your audience in YouTube by using keywords, uh, which goes to um, another subject completely. Uh, but basically, uh, you can find out uh, what the keywords trends are um, by searching that on the internet. And we'll talk about that at some other time. Uh, and then there's eBlogger. Blogger is really uh, coming up in terms of uh, popularity. Um, it's uh, one of those things that is <clears throat> more like a, a conversation. Let's have a little chat today. It's Friday. Uh, let's sit down and uh, I'm going to give you a little uh, article about uh, how to raise roses. Um, and uh, the blogger allows you to communicate promptly, either on a schedule or uh, spontaneously. But one thing it does do is set you up as a knowledge leader. Where do I want to go to find out about uh, uh, roses? Okay, if you're always blogging about roses, you become uh, you develop a reputation of being a knowledge leader about roses. It gives you credibility, uh, and it gives you a chance to obtain feedback on products, services, or trends in the industry. What's everybody talking about uh, in terms of roses? Is it the Lincoln rose, or is it uh, a recently developed uh, uh, new version? Uh, and when we look at the business to consumer, that market, 93% um, of uh, people who interviewed um, show uh, that they use Facebook, uh, of the people that, that use uh, social media. The next is uh, Twitter, and that's uh, fluctuating with um, Instagram. Instagram is developing a lot more uh, than what this graph shows. This is a little bit dated graph. Instagram uh, is up higher. Google, uh, Google Plus doesn't exist anymore. They canceled that a couple months ago. Uh, YouTube is getting uh, uh, more popular. 
Pinterest, etc. These these lines are going to be changing all the time. But on everything I've seen since the history of uh, um, of the um, uh, social media, Facebook has been the leader uh, in every situation. It's also the number one ad revenue on uh, uh, on the uh, internet. So they're they're selling more ads than than anybody else, even Google. Uh, so business to business. Um, their main uh, area is uh, LinkedIn. They're still doing some uh, Facebook uh, and some of these others to a lesser extent. But if you're a business uh, for looking for professionals, that's um, uh, LinkedIn is the place to be. Uh, and social media drives increased traffic. Why do people post? Um, and what drives the uh, what drives the um, the um, increased traffic? increased exposure. The more you post, the more you get out there, the more people uh, come to your sites. Um, uh, increased traffic, the, the, the more people actually get to your site um, uh, uh, helps. And then developing loyal fans, people that engage with you when they come in, they, they'll make a comment, they'll like your post. Um, and it also provides uh, uh, marketing um, insight. If you, if you put marketing insight, like um, 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 apples are going to go up in price uh, this year, um, that sort of thing. Uh, it can um, it can increase your credibility. Um, looking for leads, um, people come to your uh, to your site because you're offering to provide some leads. Um, improve your search rankings. The more people that come to your site. Um, the more you uh, come up higher in the uh, in the Google rankings, let's say, uh, and uh, growing business partnerships, um, uh, improving your sales. Uh, notice that sales is not number one uh, in the uh, in the area. Why is number, why is sales so low in the in the place in the in the ranking? It's because all of these other things above it lead to the sales. If you don't do your homework in developing your mar your your uh, image and developing loyal fans um, and uh, touching the right uh, marketplace, the sales aren't going to be there. So you the uh, the back uh, uh, the background work is so important in getting people to uh, to come to your uh, um, to your uh, store to buy. Um, Targeted ads. You can see again, this is revenue based. Um, Facebook is number one uh, by far. I think the the the, um, uh, the the gap has shrunk a little bit, uh, but uh, Facebook is still number one. It was always based on a on an ad um, uh, revenue model. Uh, content selections. Um, what is the what is the most reactive uh, content? It's visual. Okay, it doesn't say text up here. Uh, even blogging is not all about text. It's got we've got pictures and recordings and videos and so forth. When I go to your website, something's going to slap me in the face. What is there about your website that catches me right now? It's going to be that picture. It's going to be that little. Uh, graphic that you put up there. It's going to be that video of your, uh, of your niece uh, jumping on the sofa, uh, whatever. Um, but it's all about visual these days. And podcasting is uh, coming up. And uh, I would have to say that based on our visual environment these days, podcasts are getting a lot more, uh, a lot more popular. So, um, Dri uh, blogging drives leads. Uh, that's one of the the most popular um, uh, one of the most popular reasons why people actually start blogging. Uh, they engage with people. They people develop a little relationship, and you drive them to your website uh, or your Facebook page or wherever you want them to go. Um, the most um, the most responsive, the most interactive is going to be your blogging. Um, Videos are very strong. Uh, videos fall into that image of photos and videos, which is visual. So you can look at the uh, the left two parts here as almost the same category, except videos are a little more effective than uh, uh, than just a flat picture, depending on the picture, of course. Okay. Um, 
uh, business to business. Again, LinkedIn is first, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and so forth going on down. And these will change as the uh, platforms disappear, like the Google Plus is gone. They're replacing it with something else. Okay. Uh, now you need to plan a timeline of the steps you're going to get to. Okay. Um, business goals. Um, to build awareness of your business or to strengthen relationships with clients, prospects, and influencers. Um, these are a goal that you might have when you're trying to develop your um, your um, advertising campaign or your marketing strategy. Uh, I want to better understand the people who buy. Okay, so I'm going to do a series of advertisements that in, encourage people to respond to my poll so I can find out uh, better. So now I'm going to do a, a Facebook uh, post that links to a poll that I'm, that I'm conducting or a survey. Uh, another goal that I might have with my marketing is to increase my website traffic. After all, that's where I sell. That's where my catalog resides. Uh, and that's uh, a website is a place that doesn't move off my timeline by the end of the day. It's always there. Okay. So my, if my objective in this campaign is to increase people to get to my website, that's, that's my business goal. Or maybe to improve customer service. And you're developing this program to uh, provide information to people to make them feel more connected to you or maybe to understand their product a little bit better. Uh, you're always seeing YouTube videos that are giving you trips, tricks and, and tips about um, how to use Excel, stuff we've used all our, uh, all our digital lives, Excel. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there that you've never tried, and you can go and uh, this person is uh, giving you a chance to get some tips about, uh, about that, and I'm thinking that that uh, helps me uh, understand uh, the product you just sold me. And identify new product ideas. Uh, if that's what you're trying to do with your marketing campaign, this is, um, I'm trying to uh, show people, um, my new product idea is um, um, yogurt uh, soil. Uh, I can put a flower in there and yogurt makes this thing grow really great. So it's a new product idea. Uh, doesn't matter what your product is. If that's your objective, that should be uh, recognized up front when you start your marketing campaign. Uh, another might be to in, in increase or improve your search engine ranking. Uh, when we're talking about Google, how does Google decide who comes first, okay? Part of it is in the, uh, is in the keywords, but it's more than what keywords you use. It compares the keywords you're begging for to finding those in the text or the names of the pictures or the, uh, the links that you have on your website. Does the content of your website support the keyword that you put in that header of your, uh, your web page? And then if uh, Samalid uh, is trying to sell shirts and I'm trying to sell shirts and her website mentions shirts 10 times and mine only mentioned shirts twice, she's gonna come up, if that was the only, uh, the only uh, measurement, she would come up higher because she, uh, her site seems to be more appropriate to somebody who's searching for shirts, uh, that kind of thing. So that can be a, a business goal uh, for your marketing campaign. Uh, to drive traffic to your trade show uh, or an event that you're going to. Uh, for instance, if, uh, uh, if the Chamber of Commerce is running a, a trade show as they've done in the, in the old days, um, then, uh, I'm going to tell you in my marketing campaign that you should come to this trade show. And oh, by the way, I'm in booth 25, uh, but driving traffic to the trade show. Minimizing uh, social media firestorms. In other words, you get out ahead of whatever's coming on. Um, uh, if somebody has a, a complaint about you, you get out there and you deal with it, either with a <clears throat> response to a review or a new article about how things should be properly used. Um, your business goal could be to generate leads or ultimately to generate sales. And when you do this, your goal, uh, whatever it is, um, needs to be specific before you start your marketing. Uh, timeline of your steps. Define your business goals and strategy. Number one, don't ever try. Uh, I know people that, that just advertise in the newspaper with a business card ad just because it's Friday. Uh, there's no goal associated to it. So how do I know I got a return? Was it worth it? 
Um, and then learn about the social media. Which one is best for your customers? I got so many people that tell me I'm not going to advertise on Facebook because I hate it. The real question is, where are your customers? If your customers are on Facebook, I don't care how much you hate Facebook, you need to be on Facebook. I don't, it's not about you. All of this marketing is not about you. It's about your customer. You need to, uh, if you want them to buy, you need to go to them with your proposal. Um, you need to select a team of uh, people that maybe, uh, if you're one person operation, then we're gonna find some other resources that can help. Uh, we need to set up your accounts on your, uh, on your social media sites. And we need to find that existing targeted uh, community and then set up a blog. As a blog is uh, um, kind of trendy here. Uh, so uh, first you need to define your goal, learn about social media so you can pick the correct one. Um, you need to select the team you're going to use to construct it. You need to set up the accounts on the media sites you've chosen. You need to find existing the, that target community. Where are they? And then you need to set up your blog to establish yourself as an as an expert. Um, and Len, isn't the goal really of all of this marketing is to extract someone's contact information? I, I was involved with a restaurant that had 20,000 Facebook followers. And when they went to sell the restaurant, they wanted to include in the sale a dollar for every Facebook follower, which makes sense because they've got 20,000 people that are sort of fans of theirs. And what it came down to was they did not get it because someone said, if you can give us their name and address, we'll pay you for your mailing list. But having followers on Facebook doesn't really allow you to communicate with them directly. So isn't really the goal of all of this is to get them, as you say, to your home base, which is your website, get them to sign up for um, specials, offers, so that you have a way to communicate with them directly. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say yes and no. Ultimately, that's the only effective result uh, from, your, uh, from your marketing. But the first thing you need to do is to get people to know who you are. So um, even if I just put an ad out there that has no call to action, it doesn't request your email, uh, I'm trying to create that impression in your, uh, in your mind that the next time I post, you're going to be willing to give me that uh, email, uh, uh, advertise, uh, email uh, address. Okay. But it, in that sense, then, that first ad is contributing to that goal of getting people to sign up for my newsletter. You've got to kind of earn the address. You've got to earn the right, right to get right. that contact information. Sure. Exactly. And all of it really leads up to that, I think. Okay. Uh, determine the sequence of, uh, uh, of sites. In other words, which one you're going to do first, second, or third. Uh, and are you doing them once a week, twice a week, three times a week? Could be different on different platforms. Uh, listen to the communities. In other words, take feedback. Um, Develop your connections. Uh, for instance, one of the things that brings you up in your rankings is how many people are you connected to? If you link to MSBDC, uh, you put that, that link into your website, that counts as a, uh, as a, um, a credible connection. Uh, the more of these connections that you have indicates the involvement of this site in the general community. Uh, so that counts for things. So listen to your community, develop your connections. Plan and create your content, not just blah content. We've got to address the need that people have. Uh, and uh, it, this point mentions here an editorial calendar. I mentioned that back when we were talking about the graph. What message are we going to send in January, February, March, April? Um, it's going to be seasonally sensitive. It's going to be, um, uh, in the case of, uh, let's say, a student community, it'll be based around student products will be advertised during the time that students are on, on site. So your editorial calendar tells you in advance of what you plan to do. And this also helps you to build your budget for what it's gonna cost you to reach those folks. Uh, um, a timeline is either uh, um, to publish uh, or develop your network or both. And then uh, part one of the steps is to learn time-saving tools. For instance, uh, instead of posting to all the websites, you can go to HubSpot and uh, um, put your post in there and HubSpot will distribute it to the various platforms that, you, that you've decided. Uh, that's one time-saving tool. You don't have to spend all that time building posts. 
Uh, and other thing would be um, scheduling in Facebook. You can build all your all, all of your Facebook posts, posts on Sunday afternoon, and Facebook will post them whenever you're uh, whenever you set them up. And then schedule management meetings, and it could be it could be just with your mother, uh, just to talk about what's going on, so you understand uh, where it is and reviewing where uh, reviewing your progress. And especially if you have other people on your team, even if they're not employees, it's a good idea to get together and review. Uh, um, and uh, revise and then um, uh, execute uh, the, new, uh, the new positions. Okay, so here's some, uh, some ads, or some addresses rather, uh, that can help you uh, get there. Basically, you don't need the, the whole uh, stuff here, um, but um, linkedin.com, and then you go to their search function, twitter.com, and you go to their search in engine, Facebook.com and then go to their search function and then YouTube.com and they have a search uh, procedure as well. Okay. Uh, and these are just a few. Every one of those social media platforms is going to have um, a, a search function in it. Uh, retaining customers and getting them re referred to your others, give them a little bit more than they expect. Um, as in that, um, that uh, smoke detector. Uh, Set proper and accurate expectations. In other words, don't expect um, that the customer, uh, uh, that this, that this uh, ice chest is going to turn on by itself. You have to uh, let them realize that they have to turn it on or uh, that this, uh, this thing is not going to last forever in the dark, uh, that sort of thing. Set their expectations about what they expect from your, uh, from your product and give them something just a little bit more. I have a, a friend up in Vermont who has a carpet cleaning business. And one of the things that he does, uh, after the carpets are all cleaned, he has his, his people go around and uh, clean the baseboards all the way around and clean the windows in the room. And I asked him, why do you do that? He says, because when the, when the lady of the house comes in and inspects my work, the, the baseboards are gonna shine and, there, and the windows are gonna be really clean so all that nice clear light comes in and makes my product look better. But when the, when the lady of the house comes out and checks the work, she has that little extra wow factor. I didn't expect you to clean the baseboards, I just thought you were going to do the carpets. Well, how long did it take them to clean the baseboards? Uh, so it's kind of a, something more, just a little bit extra that they didn't expect. Like the dog treat that, uh, that uh, Anita mentioned earlier. How many banks now, when they see an animal in the car, they give an extra uh, dog bone to the, to the dog owners. Always ask for feedback and learn from it. Ask for a reference if, uh, if it's appropriate. Uh, always ask for feedback. I don't know how many times I order stuff online, I get a little note that says, uh, uh, thank you for purchasing our product. How is it working? Do you need any help to set it up? Da 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 da. Um, always ask for feedback. Uh, Leave your business card and brochure uh, with them. Well, it's hard to do today, uh, but you can, um, uh, you can give them um, uh, an extra email with that sort of stuff and thank them for their business. Even if you don't ask them for input, you can send a note that says, um, glad you ordered that pizza from us last night. Thanks for your business. We really appreciate it. Uh, follow up in weeks with a, with a, a thank you card. Uh, Consider an annual newsletter, all different things that you could do to make your customers feel more like they're part of your business. And there are a, a number of other ideas. Uh, customer loyalty cards where uh, um, buy, uh, buy 10 subs, get one free, that kind of thing. Okay, strategic partnering. Um, this is defined as um, affiliating with another company to uh, share resources, markets, and prospects. Uh, it's like we, I was saying earlier, if I'm a flower shop and, and uh, Samalid is selling uh, wedding dresses, it's a natural uh, a, a connection. We can share prospects. This bride just came in and ordered flowers. Uh, the bride's mother came in and ordered flowers. Um, maybe you want to contact them. Boy, uh, you make me sound like a serial entrepreneur. I've been selling t-shirts, bridal dresses. <laughs> so what's next? But... To that point, Len, that's, that's something so important. People forget um, there are their customers, your customers, 
go to many other businesses as well, not just yours. So if you are reaching out to your fellow business owners, other, other businesses in your community, like the bakery or the hair salon, and you are talking to them and you are discussing how you can help each other out and leave business cards or flyers or, you know, promotions or do referrals, that, that's a great way to expand your customer base. Definitely, definitely. Um, uh, suppliers are another, uh, other folks to connect with. Uh, uh, you want your supplier to pass out your business cards when it goes to other places. And um, uh, you can uh, return the favor by uh, telling other folks that, oh, this is, the, this is where I get the uh, fertilizer, whatever. Um, customers can be uh, strategic, uh, competitors can be uh, uh, strategic partners as well. Uh, you don't want to uh, steal each other's uh, specific customers. But uh, uh, as an example, if you go into um, Home Depot and buy a bunch of materials to, to, build, uh, to build a fence, you can also uh, touch base with uh, contractors who will put that fence up for you. Uh, and they're, uh, they're connected. Uh, they get a reference from, their, from, the, uh, from your competitor, maybe. Uh, customers as well. Um, this referral card as we were talking about. Um, uh, and you can go to businesses with like customers. In other words, if I'm selling uh, flowers, which is my objective is to express your sentiment, uh, maybe there's a chocolate uh, store next door uh, and you could cross pollinate, give, a, give your girlfriend a, a dozen roses and a box of chocolates. Uh, so you can cross advertise that way. And the, but the key in, the, in any of these uh, strategic partnerships is a win-win relationship. Uh, for instance, if I'm running a golf course and there are hotels in the area, we want them to cross-pollinate. We, we want to say, uh, here are hotels in the area if you're coming to our tournament. And we want the hotels to say, oh, here's one of the activities you could do when you're in our area. Um, so win-win uh, relationships. And they're all around you. Uh, joint product development is one type of strategic partner, uh, joint promotions, um, uh, especially trade shows, uh, website links, uh, a good way to connect with other businesses and have them connect with you, ask them to put your website link on their page, cross marketing, which means I'm advertising my product and oh, by the way, this other person um, has this, uh, cross literature, in other words, you're both selling, uh, push, pushing out the same literature. Uh, international partnerships. Um, uh, right now, it's not such a great idea, but uh, uh, oftentimes you can find a supplier or something unique and special uh, in the international marketplace. And then combined shipping or support activities. I had a client who was opening a garden center, and um, uh, I had advised them to go find a, uh, an industry mentor. They found, uh, they were traveling in New York, and they found this garden center in New York run by an older couple. Uh, they got into a conversation and uh, they got invited to tea and dinner. And now what they do is they order in bulk and drop ship to each of their locations. So they get the bulk price because they're ordering more, but they're drop shipping to each of the two garden centers. So uh, their cooperative purchasing is helping them to reduce their individual costs uh, or support some activities. You might uh, uh, help somebody if they were they were trying to do a, uh, a new face-to-face uh, uh, -face promotion or something like that. Uh, plans are dynamic, which means they change all the time. We were talking about the, the effect of the COVID. Well, uh, COVID is not the last change you're going to have to make. Things will happen along the way. When we get back to quote unquote normal, normal is going to have a different picture and you're going to have to revise your strategy. And then something else will come, uh, come down. If there's a political change, maybe that'll change some rules. And uh, you'll have to be uh, able to pivot on that. Do your customers um, uh, agree with the, uh, um, um, the uh, basically the, uh, the function of your, uh, of your product? Uh, is that something that, uh, that makes them feel good about you? Is your uh, pricing competitive? Uh, does it make sense? Does the value um, compare to what I think it's worth? Does your product or service need upgrading? 
uh, everything uh, needs upgrading, uh, whether it's um, penicillin or um, <coughs> 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 or the telephone you're using. What is your competition doing? It's very important to be aware of uh, what the competitor is doing. You need to try to stay ahead of them. And what is the general market doing? Um, uh, what products uh, and services are people looking for right now? We, <clears throat> we indicated um, delivery services, specializing in takeouts and stuff like that, online services. Um, uh, as soon as uh, places started locking down, Zoom, as, a, as an example, tripled their, uh, their membership. Uh, and now it's even more than that. But they were in the right place at the right time. And now their market plans said that they've got to get bigger computers and need more staff. They need to develop some of the techniques of their software. Uh, and um, uh, that's what's happening in the general market today. Uh, I use, uh, I'm just using this business model canvas. Uh, if you Google business model canvas, you'll find a dozen different ways of saying it. But basically a, a business model canvas only ask questions. It's up to you to provide the answers. Who are your customers? We covered that before. What are the problem or the need that the customers have? What are they using now uh, to solve that problem? And what solutions do you offer? And which of these solutions match those problems? Uh, and then how are you going to make money at it? Uh, defining your income stream is really important. Then we look at the channels. How am I going to get the message to the customer? And how am I going to get the product to the customer? Then we go into the key metrics. If your goal is $100,000 in sales this year, how am I going to get there? Number one, I'm going to start my, uh, uh, start my website on, um, on March 1st. And, and then uh, I'm going to start advertising in Facebook on April 15th, or whatever. Key metrics to get you to that $100,000 goal. And then what is the cost of all this? What's it going to cost you to produce uh, these revenue, these services, and so forth? And then finally, the most important question here is, what is your competitive advantage? What's different about your business? As Samalid lead mentioned in the, uh, in the beginning, I believe. Uh, what's, what makes me wanna go see you? Um, we use this business model canvas in, uh, in SCORE just to lead us through the discussion. And there are all kinds of variances to this uh, uh, business model canvas. Uh, so I don't wanna confuse you with that, but uh, anyhow. Uh, so it's important that you get to your plan. Uh, as it says above, accuracy before momentum. Make sure things are working right before you go jumping into the pond. Uh, and then act, do something. Okay, you, we went through all this stuff. We decided we're going to plan. What are we going to do now? It's time for you to build your marketing strategy and develop that marketing plan uh, with the cost so that you can accurately assess did I reach the goals of that marketing campaign? And uh, what did it cost me? Did I get the return? If I spent $6,000 on this, did I get my target of $100,000 in sales? Uh, uh, and that kind of brings us uh, to the end of the presentation. Uh, these are the folks that are responsible for bringing you uh, um, not only this uh, presentation, but the presentations coming up. And um, um, thank you very much for coming. And uh, if you have questions, these are the contact uh, addresses, if you will, uh, for, these, uh, for the various organizations that can help you here. And I just want Great. to bring up the flyer of the rest of the, um, the classes that we've got, just so you can, are you able to see my screen? Not yet. It says that you started screen sharing. So uh, maybe just takes a minute. We should see your turn in a minute. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now we can see it. Yeah, I just wanted to give you an idea of all the many things that are coming up. So when you talk about taking we're, action, Len, right? I mean, this is a great way to start taking action. We're seeing, yeah, uh, yeah we're seeing uh, uh, the presentation I just finished. You're, you're sharing that. Okay. okay, round screen. But but the point is well taken, Anita. So while you look up the uh, bring up the right uh, listing of the upcoming webinars, um, folks take note of that. Also visit our page at msbdc.org and go to training, and they're all listed there. 
um, all of the upcoming trainings are listed there. You can register now and you'll get notices as we um, get closer to those webinars. We're doing them mostly on, on Mondays and Thursdays, except for next week because of the holiday. Uh, I think we're doing Tuesday instead, correct, Anita? That's right. Do you see it? Right. No, uh, no, we still see the presentation. To... You need to close out um, close that presentation. And I think it'll come up. I did close it out actually. Um, okay. So here, I'll I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and, and share my screen real quick uh, with folks, if I may. Um, here we go. Uh, so this is our website, msvdc.org. Uh, you go to training, and you can see them right here. Um, huh. Yeah. Today, um, we just did uh, marketing your business. Um, and uh, on the 8th, we have Marketing Your Business, uh, another, another part here, the basics of designing your website, that's September 8th from 1 to 3. Again, no charge. Please do register. We have a lot of other stuff coming up in here, Facebook, um, as well as basics of starting a business, Instagram, lots of different things. Um, I, I do want to know real quick that you know, it's a Facebook 1 and a Facebook 2. Um, and so for those folks who are already familiar, very familiar with Facebook, you, you could skip Facebook one, but, um, but definitely for those who are not familiar or, or comfortable with Facebook, you definitely want to be able to attend this Facebook uh, one part. And obviously, um, as, as Len mentioned, um, start with your website, right? So if next week we're going to talk about building your website. That should be the first thing you build, right? Because all of the social media, uh, channels that you're going to be using, you want to send people back to your site so they can take an action, whether it is um, calling your business to order takeout from your restaurant, look at your menu, or go to your online store, or find out where you're located, what your hours are, whatever that is, or contacting you. So thank you so much, Len, for today's presentation. That was great. Um, let's see, we have one comment here in the Q&A. Uh, you got kudos there from people. Thank you for for your all the information. Anita, Eliason, thank you so much for uh, hosting this webinar with us today. Everybody have a great afternoon, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>